what is up guys after my last update video I had asked if you guys wanted to see more development stuff and it sounded like a good amount of you did so I'm making this video and I'm tr gonna try to get a little bit into the weeds with how the new evolutions engine works uh, so to give a little bit of a backstory um, back in on SMS 1 in 2015, I did everything by hand, <laughs> which is possible, but super time consuming. I actually have SMS 1 here. So this is uh, SMS 1 level 3, for example, um, has this level object in it in the hierarchy. And as you can see, just everything in here was just manually placed. <laughs> and this took forever, including the set dressing. At least the uh, the objects that I was using for the set dressing were prefabs, but um, I still had to go in and manually put them in. There was no script or anything um, placing them dynamically, so that was a nightmare. And that was just one level, and there, as you know, are seven levels in F in SMS one. Um, so yeah, that kind of sucked, but that was 2015 and I didn't really know the full power of prefabs. So fast forward to evolutions and well, I guess I'll just give you a quick example of what a prefab exactly is. So I have a prefabs folder here. I'm just going to make a new cube. I'm going to call this, I don't know, cube dude. Got camel case it. So cube dude is just this cube that lives in this scene. Let's turn off the lights so you can kind of see it a little better. Um, all right. So I'm going to make a material and a material is basically just tells a 3d object how the surface should behave. And I'm just going to do this for the sake of example and we'll call this cube dude skin. I'm going to put it on cube dude. Cool. So going back to the example that I showed with how SMS one was built, like you could assume cube dude is a wall or a floor or whatever. Let's say I'm going to build a floor. So you duplicate cube dude. You can vertex snap him like that. Duplicate again like that. Oops. Like that. Whatever. There's a few issues with this. Um, for example, if I wanted to resize him, right, I would have to literally go into each of these and resize it, which is fine if there's only three of them. But as you can see, um, it's only going to get the one. So this is where prefabs are super powerful. So the way you would ideally want to do this is to make cube dude a prefab. You would just drag him into any folder really, but I'd like to keep everything clean. So now I can actually delete cube dude from here. And another thing that's cool with prefabs is I can now bring this into any scene that I'm working in. And so you would make your adjustments here on the prefab la uh, layer. You could actually open the prefab and like if you want to really focus on it and do other cool stuff inside of this. So this prefab has its own hierarchy. So we could like do the same thing I did in the scene view and add a bunch of stuff to the prefab, which is awesome. Um, but so basically now if you want cube dude in the scene, uh, just drag it from wherever it is in your project folder into the scene. So now I have a copy of cube dude and now I could, I guess I could still duplicate it cause it's a prefab. Yeah. So this is like basically the exact same thing that I had done before. Um, but I'm working with a prefab. So now if I did for whatever reason, want to resize this, I would go into the prefab and let's cut them in half. So, this is 0 0.5, 0.5, 0 0.5. So now it's smaller. So now I come back into the main scene and boom, everything is updated, which is cool. I don't have to lift a finger, <laughs> uh, the prefab itself. And the reason these aren't connected anymore is because I literally cut their size in half. As you can see, they all have the new scale. But so the, the, the key takeaway with prefabs is essentially, um, you can build something once and then reference it reference it from anywhere in the project. 
which is awesome. And that, after my crappy little crash course on prefabs, and get rid of this, I was able to boil down essentially the um, the core essence of Slaughter Me Street, or the core experience, into what I'm calling the chunk prefab. So if I go into this actual hall generator folder, you see this chunk prefab, and I'll jump into that and show you guys what that is. Um, this is essentially how the entire game is built, right? This chunk basically contains the walls, the floor, uh, the ceiling, doorways, side halls, and even the set dressing, which is cool. And I guess, yeah, the lights and stuff um, are part of the set dressing, technically, I guess. I don't know. So, like, I can... And as I was saying with that Cube Dude example, um, you can see how this has, like, its own little hierarchy. So it's, like, its own little uh, Unity scene, kind of. So by default, the wall fill is on for everything. So we just get a straight hall without any extra logic. But then I can turn on this object wall hollow, and that gives me a door frame and a side hall. So then I had this object called hall generator. And, oh, actually, let me back up. So as you can see, there's two other prefabs here that the game uses, and one is the exit chunk, the other is the start chunk. So this is actually pretty plain, I still need to go in and uh, update it, but so the exit chunk is exactly that. <laughs> it uh, It's another chunk, so it's based off of the original chunk, so everything lines up and everything, and then it also has, because it's the exit, it has the exit sign, it has a door, and then it has a little animation that plays the going down the staircase. And then that gets hooked into the logic of telling the game when a hall ends and stuff. So, these are the three prefabs that basically build out the entire game, which is awesome. And then I pass that over to, I have a script, my hall generator script, um, and it literally just references each prefab. That's another cool thing about prefabs is you just set up one reference and then with code you can build out whatever you're looking to build out. So in my case, um, I have the hall generator, the chunk. So in here, and this is all just kind of like um, placeholder for now, how this is currently working. But So I have a function that literally is just looking for how long I want the hallway to be and how many doors I want it to have. And then it will randomly um, create two doors, essentially, and then evenly spread them out throughout um, throughout the hallway. So like, I could say init hall 10 0. So if I hit play, we should get a hall that is a length of 10 and no side halls, which is awesome. As you can see, in a matter of, like, one second, <laughs> I was able to build a hall that I mean, doesn't have anything in it yet, but that for, like, something like this, uh, this, this probably would have taken me, like, half a day, if not longer, in the, the old days. <laughs> so now I want to, let's, let's get some doorways in here, right? So I just would pass a five in there. And then, so now this will be a length of 10 with five doors, and the these doors will be randomized, as you can see. One, two, three, four, five, which is pretty cool. And I added extra logic, I, I already mentioned this, but there's extra logic in there to make sure that um, they're not, like, it doesn't just add all five here, or like all five at the end, or, or like randomly, like, um, this will, they're, they're still randomized, but it'll make sure that they're evenly spread out. So basically you don't get like a front-loaded hall or like an end-loaded hall. That's all really cool and streamlined and awesome, but obviously for the getting this into a shippable game, the game, the main thing around SNS is the story mode, obviously, which we needed an extra layer of control for the hallways because um, I want everybody to be playing the same story mode. So the creatures will still be random with respect of what level you're on and their difficulty. However, the layout itself, I would like to have the exact same for levels like 1 through 7 or 1 through 14, however many levels the story mode is going to have. So I added, I leveraged, um, I'm leveraging what's called a scriptable object. And so a scriptable object in Unity can basically be anything that you want it to be. A scriptable object is good for things like datasets, 
character stats, game settings, basically anything that you want to set up beforehand and then pull down into the game and use that information. So in my case, we have, uh, where is it, there we go. We have levels, right? A level is comprised of level data, which as of right now is just checking to see if there's a left door, if there's a right door, if there's a left passage or a right passage. And I'll go into those in a later video, but these are a specific evolutions thing. Creating that script then allows me to, I can right click and go to the create menu. I now have this content and then I can make a level data, right? And this level data is literally just basically a scriptable object representation of what the level is going to look like. So then in my hall generator, I'm passing in this, for example, level one, it will interpret. So like I have my, my reference to level one, which is the level data. It will then pass it into my new, well, it calls the same function. So it's going to initialize the hall and it's going to make it the length of the length value that it gets from the scriptable object. And then it's also going to call my updated door placement, um, which I named door placement fixed. And then it's going to basically take in the contents of the scriptable object level data and spit that out into the game, which is exactly what I'm looking to have it do. So the way this works then is I, I'm already, I'm passing it in and I have that function. I uncommented that function to call. Um, and then so like right now level data has doesn't have anything in it so I expect it to do nothing yep <laughs> uh, so that's what it looks like when there's no hall data it just it looks like it just added the start cap and the end cap so this level data is essentially the chunks so let's go ahead and say I want 10 chunks in here so now we should get a hall with 10 chunks awesome and now we can open these up actually. I'm gonna open up all these. And it's literally this simple. So let's go every other. I'm gonna go left, right. So now we'll get a hall that's 10 with a left door, a right door, etc. And there you go. And that's why prefabs and scriptable objects are awesome. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I wasn't too uh, too scatterbrained with it and let me know if you want to see more uh, behind the scenes stuff like this.